about to go on stage right now. I'm about to go and start talking about three persuasive points that you need in sales right now to be able to convince other people. Let's go. Let's go. I believe something big is possible. Yep. And when I walk off that stage, when I'm done here, I believe that you're going to believe that something big is possible for you. See, anything that's ever been created in the world has first started in the mind. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and he said, let there be light, and there was light. He spoke it into existence. Do you know what? We can also speak things into existence as well. See, what happens in the mind a lot of times is that there's things that hold us back. I want to ask you, what's holding you back right now in your mind? Because you know what ends up happening is this, is that when you start taking the first step out, your mind now pushes you out of the comfort zone. You know what's going to end up happening? I guarantee it. There are people that are going to try to hold you back. And I'm going to sit here and tell you, don't let people hold you back. Because when you let people hold you back, the entire world is held back. I see posts all the time where people sit there and they make fun of Elon Musk. Oh, he just did this because the government gave him money. If he listened to what other people said, the entire world would be held back. We would not be the same world that we are today. So I'm telling you right now, don't let people hold you back. Who in here wants to know what it takes to be successful? Yes or no? So that question was given to me by an employee just recently. I was walking to my call center and this employee stood up and said, hey, Greg, let me ask you a question. What does it take to be a millionaire and to be very successful? I said, do you want to know? Yes, yes. Do you want to know? Yes. yes. Here's what it takes to be very, very successful. You have to be the best at what you do. If you want to be absolutely successful in life, you have to be the very best at what you do. I then asked him this question. What is the most expensive piece of equipment in a restaurant? Let me ask you that question. What's the most expensive piece of equipment in the restaurant? Chef. The chef. Stove, the most expensive piece of equipment in the restaurant is the dishwasher. The dishwasher is responsible for sanitizing every single utensil, every single cup, every single plate. If something goes out, it can not only harm the individuals that are eating, but it will harm the reputation of that restaurant. And guess what? That restaurant can close because of bad reviews. What some people think of as the lowest position in the restaurant, the entry point into a restaurant, actually is the most important part. The little things in life actually matter that will push you forward. I then told him this story. I read a story with George Foreman. And George Foreman said that one of his first jobs was a dishwasher. And as a dishwasher, what he made the commitment to do was this. He would be the best dishwasher in that entire restaurant. He would clean the plates and utensils faster than any other dishwasher in that restaurant. But he went a step further. He not only wanted to be the best dishwasher in that restaurant, he wanted to be the best dishwasher that ever had been in that restaurant or ever would be in that restaurant. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that mindset helped propel him to where he ended up being in life? Yes. 
So I told my agent, I said, be the dishwasher. And so now when I walk up to him, I say, hey, how's the dishwasher doing today? Because that is the most important thing in life. See, you know, I think what ends up happening sometimes is this, is that as kids, we sat in the back seat of the car, and we said, Mommy and Daddy, are we there yet? I've got two kids. I've got a three-year-old and a six-year-old. You know, as adults, you know what ends up happening? We're in control of the vehicle, but we're still asking ourselves the exact same question. Are we there yet? Because we hold ourselves back in our mind. So what I decided a long time ago is I wanted to be the very best salesperson on the planet. And every day I wake up to try to keep that going forward. So what I'm going to do today is this. I'm going to talk to you about three things that I think needs to happen in order to be successful in selling and in persuading other people. So I call them the three persuasive points. The first way to persuade somebody else to do something is this, is you have to focus on the problem. If you don't spend time with me, you can't know what my problem is. I took it so far that I wrote a book, Sell the Problem, Not the Solution. Because so many salespeople, if you're new to the industry, they try to sell the solution. They don't focus on the actual problem itself. So I want you to do this as you're writing it down. I want you to write down, what is your biggest problem right now? And I want you to write that down. What's my biggest problem right now that I'm having? And I'm going to tell you something. I can tell each one of you what your problem is. Here's each one of your problem. It's also my problem. We believe that we shouldn't have any problems. And those limiting things allow us to be held back because when we are faced with problems, we think in our mind, we shouldn't have any problems. And that stops us from moving forward. We all have problems. All of us are hit every single day with problems, but the good ones decide to go ahead and go around it and realize it's a part of life. We all have problems. None of us escape this life unscathed. So when you have a problem, when you're looking at a problem, it has to go hand in hand with the pain point. When you're selling over the phone, you're selling in person, you always have to tack the pain point. So what I'm doing right now is this, I'm creating a book about objections because I think that's one of the biggest things that holds a lot of salespeople back. They get hit with objections, they don't know how to respond to it. Has anybody in here, yes or no, been told that by a customer that they didn't have a problem? I don't have a problem. Yeah. And they want to hang the phone up or put the door. Yeah. Yes. So how do you respond to that? Yes or no, does everybody want to know how to respond to that? Yeah. Be sure to write this down. So if somebody said, I don't have a problem, here's how I would respond to it. I hear you, Joe. Most people don't know they have a problem until they actually end up having a problem. So I don't want you to be one of those that have a problem. Let me ask you a question. And move on. See, what I've also done is this, is I've stated the word problem three times in that sentence. I hear you, Joe. Most people don't know they have a problem until they end up actually having a problem. And I don't want you to be one of those that have that problem. Let me ask you a question. Do you know what subliminally that's done? Each time that person has heard the word problem, what are they wanting? They want the solution. So I'm leading with the problem, not the actual solution. So when you hit roadblocks, you have to get off of the solution and go back to the problem. Go back to that pain point that that person is having. Number two is this, is that you have to pull people, not push 
people. See, what happens is this, is that when you push people, you get what? Resistance. When you pull people, you get relationships. So how do you pull somebody and not push them? Very, very easy. You have to be polite. Darren had just said, we've all heard somebody use a curse word at us on the phone. We've all heard somebody yell at us over the phone. And our instinct is to do what? Is to push back. You have to pull back. You have to pull them with you. Because being polite makes them feel what? Empowered, but it makes them feel special. So when somebody would push me, I would pull them. So the third thing is this. Third thing that you have to have in order to be able to persuade other people is you have to view every interaction that you are having with another human being when you're trying to sell them is that it is a performance. When I would talk to somebody over the phone, that person was the most important person in the entire world to me. And I've said this in previous things is this. When I'm on the phone talking directly to you, my wife does not matter to me anymore. What? My kids don't matter to me anymore. What? My dog doesn't matter to me anymore. What? Why? Why is that the case? Because I am performing for you. You are the most important person in my world. So if I'm making you the most important person in my world, I'm going to expect that you make me the most important person in your world. Now, when I hang up that phone, regardless of what happens to that, my wife becomes the most important person, my kids become the most important person. Those things become the most important person. But you have to view everything as a unique performance. And most people don't do that. And I know that because I listen to thousands of phone calls. Thanks for calling. You're not performing. We're here in Hollywood. Performance. So in Hollywood, when you end up going to, a, to, a, uh, to an audition, they give you what a script. Does that sound familiar in our business, having a script? <laughs> so that script, they take that script and they make that unique to them. And here's something else. You have to make it a routine. See, the crazy thing about scripting is this, is that people think that I'm just going to go through a script. I'm going to kind of change things around. Well, guess what? When you start changing things around how you sell people, there's no way to measure what you're actually doing wrong. So I would have a process in place. When I talk to you, I had a process I had to follow. The first thing I had to do is I had to get your zip code. I had to find out where you live. That was the first thing. No matter what objection was coming my way, I had to block all that out. I would say the problem, objection, let me ask you a question, what's your zip code? I've got your address here. That was my first point of reference. And then I would have the second thing I had to do, the third thing, and that would never ever change. So if you listen to all my phone calls, every phone call started out the same, the middle was the same, and the end was the same. I viewed it as an assembly line, and you have to do that. In order to scale or to be successful in any type of business, you have to have an assembly line process but you can't treat it like an assembly line. That person has to feel like that was tailored just to them. And that is how you become the best at actually what you do. True. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna end with this right here. It's probably one of the most powerful things going forward. But first, what I mean, if you if you're, if you're like what you've heard so far, you enjoy what you heard so far, be sure to end up following me. They're gonna put that up on the screen right now. Is you can connect with me. I've got a YouTube channel, Medicare Rockstars on the right. I also have the book right there that you can scan and you can also go ahead and get the book as well. And be sure to end up connecting with me because 
There'll be a book that'll be coming out here shortly about objections. I've got an entire sales system that's coming out about objections that I think will end up helping so many individuals be better at their craft of sales. So the last thing with performance is this. You have to be prepared. When your number is called, you have to step up. When your number is called, you have to step up. When she says yes or he says yes, it's time to step up. When you're in that delivery room, it's time to step up. When your number is called, you must step up. This quote by Napoleon Hill is so important. Whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Somebody thousands of years ago kept looking up at that moon and said, it's not possible to make it to the moon. But somebody one day said, it's possible. Somebody said, there's no way you can call somebody over a phone that's not wireless. Somebody said, it's possible. So a year ago, I didn't really know Cody at all. I had just recently heard about him. I did go up to 8% last year, but about a week or so before 8%, I went to another conference. And at that conference, there were some really good speakers there. I, I was able to get some photo ops with some of the speakers there. And there was this particular speaker there that was this football player. And this football player, I really enjoyed his talk. His talk was very motivating. It was great. He had so many successes, but he had so many you know, failures. And so when he got done with his speech, I went and got a photo op with him. And as I was leaving, because I was parked in the back, as I was leaving, I actually saw him getting ready to leave in his chauffeured car. So I walked up to him and I asked if I could take a picture with him. He said, yes, I took a picture with him. And I said, you know what? I said, one day you and I are going to do business together. I said, one day you and I are going to do business together. Tim Tebow, there's my post. Great talking to Tim Tebow, one incredible individual. Look forward to hopefully working together in the future. Dated July 16, 2021. Whatever the mind can conceive, the mind can achieve. And here we are in 2022, and I will be on the same stage as Tim Tebow. Are things possible? Yes. They're possible if you put your mind to it. Do you want to know a little bit about Tim Tebow? I kind of actually follow these steps right here. So I kept telling Cody, I said, you've got a problem. You got a pain point. You need another speaker. You need another speaker there. You need somebody that's really, really recognizable. Everybody knows Ed Milet. People don't know Jerry Itzel. They're gonna, they're gonna love them when they see them in person, but you need somebody else to draw you. You got a pain point, Cody. You got a problem. Hey, what about Tim Tebow, by the way? Oh, he's a little too expensive. No, I know how much it costs for him. So we kind of started talking. Every time at the conferences, these road shows, I would actually kind of plug Tim Tebow. I would send him pictures. I would send him little things. I helped pull Cody. I didn't push him. Polite made Cody feel special. He didn't realize that I was selling him. <laughs> so now it comes down in July 2022 in Dallas, Texas. It's time to perform. And when I step up on that stage, I'm going to be prepared. Because guess what? When my number is called, it's time to step up. Thank you. I appreciate your time.